Segu, I'm Kanani from the Oneida Nation. Today I'm going to talk to you about the three sisters, the corn, beans, and squash. All three of those are very crucial to our diet as Oneida people, and white corn was part of our creation story. The three sisters are planning together as a family to benefit each other's needs. You'll learn more about the three sisters coming up next on Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin'. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin' is brought to you by Modern Home Products, the makers of MHP, Phoenix, and Profire Grills. All natural golden plump chicken, Minnesota and Wisconsin raised. It's golden good. Cherry Delight, a Door County original. Renard's Cheese of Door County, get your squeak on. The Oneida Nation and the new Oneida Market. Crisp Kraut, the world's finest sauerkraut, proudly produced in Wisconsin for over a century. And by UW Provision, the meat people, and so much more. Welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Kanani, I'll tell you what, great introduction. We're going to yes. hear a little bit more from her along the way. We're going to do the three sisters right now. We're Mad Dog right. and Merrill, by the way. Right. And uh, the, we're going to do the three sisters. Uh, we are at Duck Creek International Wood Carving Competition. Some of the nice, beautiful wood carvings that we see in front of us are just a small sample of what happens here this weekend at the Duck Creek International Wood Carving Competition, the first weekend in August, and it's held by the Oneida Nations, just, uh, just off from Highway 54, just west of Green Bay at the Oneida Village grounds. And uh, next week, Merrill, is the U.S. Open for, oh, the, for the international competition. That's something to see here, it really is, with all the competition. It's, Unbelievable. It's fantastic. We're gonna do a little, we're here to do some outdoor grilling. All right, I suppose you're right, sir. So we're gonna do some wonderful Three Sisters. Now the Three Sisters, Kanani will talk to us a little bit more on that, but it consists of wonderful squash, which was a staple for the Oneidas, uh, beans, mm. and white corn. The white corn is high in protein, so they use the white corn for protein a lot of times uh, during the middle of winter when, uh, when harvest might have been poor uh, for animals. Uh, so we're going to scoop the seeds out, but just like the Oneidas, uh, we're going to save those seeds, dry them out, so that we can have a better harvest next year. I learned so much. I really do. So we oh, have yeah, the squash it. halves here. I'm going to have, I've got some uh, red and some pinto. So we're going to intervene some red and pinto, some white corn. Now the white corn is kind of neat. We, we, it comes dried. Uh, you can get it at the Oneida Market, which is on Packerland Avenue in Green Bay just north of Mason Street on Packerland, the Oneida Market. And the, the white corn I soaked in water uh, for a day mm. and it softens it up and, and makes, it, makes it usable for the things that we're doing here today. Or you can just cook white corn soup with it like the Oneidas do. But here's what I did. Uh, uh, oh. You gotta have animal fat. There you go. You gotta have bacon. So I put a couple strips of bacon to moisten my squash, the three sisters, if you will. And I put those on the grill, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit here. All right, sounds but good. Th but that's one of the recipes I did, and you get to cook it on yours, I'll give you a hand. All right, sounds good. I'm doing a flatbread today. You know, and I, I mean, you learn so much. I'm using the regular corn flour here. Yep. And what I've got here is a basically about a cup of flour, a cup and a half of flour. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and whisk this first here, I think, just to get now, this Now, do you need food. help with water? Yeah, I got some water. It's very simple on this. I'm just using the white corn flour on here. You're going to make a consistency like of a pancake batter, the all right? The store. You got it. White so corn. put some in there. We want, let's see what Ooh. we got here. Eh, I think they're going to be all right. I think they're going to be all right. You know, I got a little bit more. Keep going. Don't be scared. I'm scared already. Yeah, I'll be scared. <laughs> all right. Now, the, the, actually, the white corn flour, the store is our white corn, which has been milled down. Uh, and you can get that at the Oneida Market also for cooking with. So we, I'm going to. We use it for breading steaks a lot. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Well, here, real quick here, before I turn it over here, I'll stir this up a little bit. What I've done in the, in the cast iron skillet here, sure. leeks was a big thing. A lot of people use leeks. I went ahead and sliced some leeks. I used some fresh rosemary. I placed this actually on the grill just to heat this up. And all what I'm going to do, I got a little olive oil in there. So I'm going to really get that a little bit more thinner to get rid of all the lumps and everything. Then I'm going to pour that right in the pan. Where's the beans? Right Where's the, the beans? And I'll put the beans on right after I pour that in the pan. Really? So you got it. You got it. So I'll let you go back to you. What do you got there, sir? Well, I'll tell you what I got. Uh, every uh, mid-August uh, in Oneida, they have a beautiful apple orchard. And you can go and pick apples. You can go and get apples. And that runs through about mid-October. So I took some wonderful apples and I cut them in half and I hollowed out the seeds and, and I put, uh, put them in a Ziploc bag and I threw a whole bunch of brown sugar in there and I let them kind of moistened up together 
and then the uh, uh, the the uh, Junhinqua, which is the cannery. The Junhinqua means Junhinqua means uh, the the place that sustains, or the sustaining place, the place that provides. Uh, so wherever you are right now in your home is your Junhinqua, actually. Uh, so we actually took some wonderful pie filling. I put it inside my little apple halves, and then I did some wonderful grass-fed beef. And maybe we can take a little gander over at this right now. Uh, so oh, I took, I know. beautiful, what are you gonna do? sir. So here's our three sisters. Here's the squash halves with the white corn, the beans, with the bacon over the top of it. Here is our beautiful apple halves with the apple pie filling in it. So we're making an apple pie okay. with the apples as the pie crust, if you will. Now, uh, uh, oh. yeah, the the Junhinqua also raises grass-fed beef. And grass-fed beef, these are beef ribs. And right. as a rule, beef ribs are awfully greasy. That's true. But when they it comes to grass-fed beef, it's so lean, so delicious. You can go to the Oneida Market and you can pick up a couple nice sections of, of grass-fed beef ribs uh, and you can cook those up and they're nowhere as near as greasy as a regular uh, rack of beef ribs are. So grass-fed beef is delicious. You can get that at the Oneida Market. You can get the pie filling, the corn. You can get a lot of great things at Oneida Market at Packerland. All right, I got the batter already in the pan here. I'm going to sprinkle some beans right on top. Get that all done. Place that on there. Oh, man. Stick that on the grill for about a good oh, 40 minutes. I really want to get it really nice and hot. But through the magic of television, no, ladies no, no, and no, gentlemen. Oh, that baby's hot. I should have put a pan on there. There it is. You want to throw that on there? Sure. There's and, 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 bread. And, so Meryl has the white corn, the beans, and so the smarty pants. Show me a little ring of squash. Ah, the ring of squash. Just slice that lengthwise. Oil that little olive oil. Grill it five to six minutes on each side and comes out absolutely excellent every time. So now we have the three sisters here. We have the three sisters over here. The three sisters is what sustained the Juhinqua during the winter time for the Oneidas. Uh, and if you come to the Oneida village here, you can see the beautiful houses that they lived in in the 1800s. So Mad Dog and Meryl, let, let's let Kanani talk a little bit more about the three sisters, right, shall we? Kanani, if you would, please. Segu, it's Kanani. The white corn today is harvested as a community using traditional methods. The corn was braided and hung from the braids in the longhouse to dry. Once it is dry, it is used for a variety of foods. While the corn is braided, a kernel is taken and set aside for next planting year, so each year the crop improves. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Uh, we're at Duck Creek International Carving Competition. Next weekend is the U.S. Open in Eau Claire, but next year, this coming year in August, the first week of August, you got to come to this event. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about white corn. Yes. Uh, white corn was a great staple uh, for the natives uh, early on during the winter time. And so the white corn, now I'm going to do something. Meryl went through the, not the bother, because it wasn't that bad, no. of taking the white corn, adding some water and beans. I went to the uh, Oneida <laughs> Nation Market, the Oneida Market on Packerland Avenue, and they have these nifty little four cornbreads with the beans right in them. And I'm pan frying those in a little bit of, uh, in a cast iron skillet with a little bit of butter. And the, the, uh, the Gunnastoa, the white cornbread, the Gunnastoa here, they also put in these big forms and in a nice oh. little patty like this. I know it's exactly what you made. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I could have done that earlier, for God's sake. So all I'm going to simply do is cut some slices. We're going to go over to our skillet over here, and I'm just going to plop those in. All right. In there and let those pan fry. But I'm going to show you a, a quick little trick right here. Okay. I, I have those nice little cornbread patties just cooking away, and they've got the bean in there. And, and what the native uh, Oneidas did is they would take the cornbread and they would fry it up. And it has the beans right in there. And then they would take simple things like apples from the orchard. And don't forget the, uh, the Oneida orchards are open from mid-August until mid-October, uh, just down the road on Highway 54 to the west of where we are at the Oneida Village right now. So you can take a little bit of apple and you can put the apple there to serve with your cornbread. Uh, once in a while, they'd take some wonderful currants, and they'd add currants to that over the top of that. Uh, they'd harvest some Ooh. wonderful honey, and at the Oneida Nation Market, at the Oneida Market on Packerland, uh, wonderful rich honey can be drizzled over the top of that cornbread too. So I did the easy way, 
Uh, but Merrill did the original. Well, I know, I hear you. That's all right, that's all right. Hey, I'm doing some white corn salsa, all right? And we're gonna pour this over some steaks, but show them the white corn. What I've done there is take the white corn. I've got a cast iron skillet back here, which I've gone ahead and take some oil and some garlic and leeks. We talked about leeks and some jalapeno peppers. And I've got those right in there. See how nice they're getting, golden brown. Now all I'm gonna do is add some fresh. Can I set this Yeah, you can, that's hot enough. And we'll see there. So uh, some fresh tomatoes? Yep, fresh tomatoes in there. I'm gonna stir that up. And we can put that back on the uh, grill. And You're making me work. I know, is that, is that heavy? So this is a white corn salsa. Right, Jalapenos, right. leeks, and tomato. Yep, I'll let you put that back. And I'm just gonna add some chili powder on there. You could use some fresh cumin if you like. Chili powder will do the trick too. Go ahead there, sir. I'll tell you what, the, uh, the United Nation farm raises some wonderful black Angus beef. And black Angus is just gorgeous stuff. Uh, the porter hoses are about yay big, and they got so much gorgeous marbleization. Uh, but at the Oneida Market uh, on Packerland Avenue, and I seared these up and I tented these sirloin. This is sirloin of black Angus. And let me get this on the countertop here. And Merrill's gonna top this with his salsa after I slice it. But the, the black Angus, folks, if you never had it, it's so gorgeous, so rich in flavor, and, 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 and delicious and juicy, it's just phenomenal. So I'm gonna take our black Angus sirloin, and this should be done to a nice medium, medium rare. It is just done to perfection. Uh, look, at the, look at the gorgeousness inside of there. That's so much flavor. So I'm gonna slice this on a platter, this beautiful sirloin. Merrill made his white corn salsa. Made Merrill Ooh. made his beautiful white corn salsa. Now when you're cooking the black Angus from the Oneida Nation good. Farms, uh, you can do those directly on the Great Grill. You can sear the dickens out of them. When we're going to do our grass-fed beef, we like to we like to sear those up and move them mm. over where there is no heat because they're a little bit leaner, the grass-fed. But this beautiful Angus has so much marbleization right. inside of there. It's just unbelievable. So let me just finish cutting All this right. up, okay? Sounds good. I've got the cumin and the white white corn on here. All what I did, stir it up in the pan, a little bit of olive oil. I used some jalapeno peppers on that. Slice them, actually really big. For the folks that don't like jalapenos, they don't have to have that on there. Regular sweet peppers. Regular sweet peppers. <laughs> I love Dang. those. Man, the flavor is just, uh, boy, you can sure smell that chili powder, yeah. can't you? And you know the, the, the white corn, if you ever had corn tortillas, the, the mm. white corn, the white corn is just phenomenal. That's what that's uh, uh, what it's made out of, and that corn flavor is just fantastic. So now we have the sirloin, we have Merrill's beautiful white corn salsa over the top of that, beautiful mm. white corn bread. Uh, Kanani is going to talk to us a little bit more about uh, what white corn means to the native uh, native Oneidians uh, uh, right now. So we're going to sample our stuff. I'm well, ready to dig Kanani, in, man. you're going to take it away because we're awfully I'm hungry. hungry. Let me tell I'm going to go for it. I'm trying this sirloin right, right now. Right. I don't know about you. We as a people believe that white corn will sustain us. We still grow and eat white corn today. Each year the Oneida farm has a husky bee where the white corn is hand-picked, braided, and hung like it was long ago. People from the community, as well as schools from all over Wisconsin, participate in this yearly event. The event takes place in October and is open to the public. Today, the corn is processed in our cannery and made into foods like Oneida cornbread, corn soup, as well as mush, and many other delicious dishes. White corn and other Oneida foods can be purchased at the Oneida Orchard or the Oneida Food Market. Mad Dog and Merrill will be right back. Well, many thanks to Kanani uh, for talking a little bit about the white corn. We're going to talk about the bison at the end of this segment. Uh, but speaking of bison, we have a beautiful New York strip right here of bison. It's so lean and so it's so delicious and healthy for you. It's great. Uh, and what we're going to do is something that my dad taught me years ago. We're going to take a little bit of bison steak or regular steak. I'm going to season up with a little bit of our grilling magic. You can find that at the Oneida Market. And then they also have some wonderful organic herbs and spices Ooh. there. So we're gonna finish it up with that. And I'm gonna do both sides real quick here. All right. And, and here's what we're gonna do. And I've got a couple of them right here. This is actually the grass-fed beef, which you can find it from the Junhinqua grass-fed beef. And it's their porterhouse. And if you wanna see the difference, this is the Black Angus porterhouse right here. This one goes home with me. So this is the grass-fed, this, this is the Black Angus. Just gorgeous, gorgeous okay. stuff. But this is the bison right here, and this segment's all about bison. But what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna tenderize it. And I'm not really tenderizing because we're gonna slow cook it nice and medium done. But what we're doing is we're taking the flavors of the herbs and spices I added, 
and I'm pushing them down into the meat product. And I could sit here and do this for the whole segment, but I just want mm. to give you the idea that we're just sitting and tenderizing. I don't need to do it to this porterhouse, but I'm adding the flavors into the cut of meat, adding the flavors into the cut of meat. A nice high heat for both of these, grass-fed beef okay. and bison. Sear them up real nice, but then move them over where there's no heat. Right. Treat them like little roasts, and then they come out just absolutely delicious. So the bison, the grass-fed beef, very lean, very heart healthy for you, but you gotta slow cook them. And I'll slice these up for Merrill's. What are you doing, Merrill? Actually, I'm gonna do another uh, another sauce. You Good. know, it's, it's been talking about a lot of leeks. They use a lot of leeks, they use a lot of uh, beans. Yep. And what I've done today, I've sauteed- And wild mushrooms. You got it, I got sauteed some mushrooms, I got some leeks in here, and also I got the white beans, all right? Go ahead and let these simmer for a good 25 to 30 minutes. I use a little olive oil. You really want to go ahead and put, I've got some charred peppers that I've done on the grill. I went ahead and used a little olive oil on these, charred these up. I'm going to mix that in there also, stir that around. I'm sorry, so you, you, have, uh, you have beans, you have mushrooms, you have peppers That's in right. there, sweet peppers. Yep. Did you put any leeks in there? Yeah, I got plenty of leeks in there. That's oh. the whole thing. Leeks, very easy to do. You could use as much leeks as you want. You just go ahead and cut them off right at the end. So we could have added the white corn to this and that could have been our we protein could have done in that there too. too. We could have done that. A little parsley. Mix that up. A little Elvis parsley in there. Yep. Mix that all together. And there again, right at the end before you're ready to serve, use the juice of some fresh squeezed lemon. Place that on. And as you know, we've talked about this before. I placed the lemon on the grill, heated that up first. That's why we got so much juice out of that. Now, I just want to remind folks that, that coming up next year in August, the first week of August, you can come to the Duck Creek International Wood Carving Competition. The following week, the second week, it's in Eau Claire. It's the U.S. Open. And it's a great, great event, all for the family. We're going to close showing you the wood carvers coming up in just a moment or two. And you can head on over to the Oneida Market on Packerland Avenue. The Oneida Market on Packerland Avenue. Pick up some great meat products, the bison, the grass-fed oh, beef, yes. and the beautiful Angus. All the white corn uh, from the Junhinqua, their, their, their cannery. All the great canned goods, great healthy things. They've got a great selection of teas there. I'm going to slice up this beautiful New York strip right. of, of bison. And this should have a nice little rareness to it. Oh, God, it's just gorgeous. Ooh. The bison is wonderful. You just don't want to overcook it. And it has such great health values to it that it's just amazing. And I think I'm just going to sit and I'm going to add it to your pan. Yeah, why Does don't that you? Does that make sense? Yeah, because then I can eat that whole thing myself <laughs> when we get down here. But that is absolutely delicious. I mean, when you really look at the whole thing of the Native Americans, of different things that you could go ahead and use that at your table. Yep. A lot of people don't think about using the white beans. Obviously, we use a lot of parsley all the time, cilantro and things like that. Leeks is the thing. Leeks are back. Get ready to use those leeks all the time. Absolutely. And don't forget, coming up from uh, till the end of October, you can start, you can go to the apple orchards on Highway 54 just west of Green Bay just before you enter into the village of Oneida. And, and you can, uh, Oneida Nation, you can actually pick up some gorgeous apples there. And you can do, oh, hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. That to the, watch, look at these beautiful oh, apples. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. On, that no. way I can have a piece of meat. Oh, Dang it all. Uh, you know, the, mm. the, the apple pies that we mm. did earlier, now I've done these before, but they're an old standard of mine. You take the wonderful apple wedges from the orchard here in Oneida, you cut them into wedges, you take out the little the seeds individually, you just cut them out, you throw them in a Ziploc baggie, I squeeze a little lemon or lime over the top so they don't turn on you, you throw a whole bunch of brown sugar in there, and you put them in the refrigerator until they get sloopy like that, Sloop. and then you put them on the grates of the grill. Hang on, Sloopy, hang, hang on. on. Sloopy. And then you put them on the grill, and honest to goodness, that brown sugar caramelizes. Gosh darn it all. Those apple wedges turn out just absolutely fantastic. Let me Very get good. Scoop here. And and I'll tell you what, from the from the uh, from the three sisters to the white corn to the bison, we've done a pretty good job I here. I think we did all right today. Exactly right. We're gonna be right back in just a second or two. We'll show you some wood carvers back there. Mad Dog and Merrill grill time. The American bison, or buffalo, once roamed North America. The bison was a very sacred animal to many native tribes of America. It provided food, shelter, clothing to the native people. Plains tribes followed the bison. It was their main source of food. In the 1800s, the tribes began treaties with the United States government to protect the lands and the buffalo for future generations. In the early 90s, the Oneida tribe became a member of the Intertribal Buffalo Council which started to bring back the buffalo to the plains and to the tribes all over the United States. In 1997, the Oneida tribe began their buffalo project with 13 bison. The herd has grown now to 127. 
When the native people harvested a buffalo, they made use of all the animal, food, shelter, and tools. Bison is one of the most healthiest meat that you can eat. It has very little fat and is mostly protein. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, this is what it's all about. Make sure you set your calendar for the first weekend in August, the Duck Creek International Wood Carving Competition. And you can come here, say great wood carvers from all over the world. Great times.